you were just watching James Bond, and guess what? Now you're watching us on Attack of the Show. Yeah, huh? The good news is that we're very similar to James Bond. Oh, yeah. For example, we also have cutting-edge tech, mm -hmm. sexy ladies in bikinis, things exploding. Yeah. But we aren't British. Hey, gonna... speak for yourself. Daphne? Oh, I Oi. like shepherd's pie. Oh, it's rolling. Oh, oh. It's I'm rolling British. intro now, please. Where I, yeah. oh, so Just roll it, I'm seriously. Like... Also, fun British. Oh, what do you I'm got? actually shooting the uh, the cover of U uh, FHM UK tomorrow, so maybe that makes me British. Oh, look at you! I'll be a little, I'll be a little British. What? FHM UK? No, oh, FHM Muck. Oh. Congratulations on the Muck. cover. Boy, leave you alone. Maybe I'll give you dual citizenship. Maybe that's all it takes. I don't think that's how that works, but maybe it will though. Yeah, there you go. You have to ask. All you have to do is ask. You just ask them. On the show Sometimes today, give you things you Fatal Farm's magical weirdness returns. It's a face melting window washing around the net. Then, in threads, we're going to try on a new Swedish clothing brand that focuses on street style. Yeah, not like Hobo Street, but like skateboarding. Really? <laughs> I want tattered pockets and urine smell, please. Mm. No, it's skateboarding street. Plus, Mr. Chris Hardwick is back, and he's got Gadget on Cannon's new camcorder that has 64 gigs of onboard storage. Find out how it rates and how much it will set you back. Plus, there are 10 nominees for Best Picture at the Oscars. 10? 10. Will the votes get split? The loop will take a guess at who will be winning the Little Gold Dudes this summer. Aww. Little Golden Guys. Now, it's very exciting. Every night after we go to bed, mm -hmm. The web video fairy comes out. Yeah. <laughs> but the video that he leaves for us under our pillows, those are NSFW. So we have to look for these. ATN needs a dance, man. I gotta give the ATN dance. Figure it out. ATN dance. Uh, we begin with the chariot of failure, otherwise known as the snowmobile. Now, sure, I know, you've seen a guy fall off a snowmobile, but this accident is a double feature of failure. I guess faced with the possibility of that man riding it again, the snowmobile just chose death. <laughs> it was like, just go. But at least, Let it ride. At least that way it can die with dignity. Oh. Yeah. Very important. Is there a snowmobile farm where they all meet <laughs> to just hang out? A big frozen pasture? No. Oh. <laughs> Stupid question. What? Today's number four is courtesy of rather... <laughs> no, seriously. Mama told me that... Snowmobile went to the snowmobile farm. You know how people say it? there aren't any stupid questions? There are. <laughs> slow push, slow push, slow push, slow no, no, push. No, no, I got it now. I got push, it. Push, I asked the stupid question. That was me you're referring to. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. You thought I was referring. I'm calling. I'm calling yeah, no, you would you? What, what, what slow pushes this week? Just. <laughs> this is a friggin' telenovela all of a sudden. Why do you smell? It's too slow. Too close and too slow. I'm moving on. Today's number four is courtesy of RatherGood.com. It's proof that England, my home country, <laughs> that their space program is, well, ugh, we're lacking a little bit. You are lacking, because we usually don't highlight scientific rocket test footage, but we will make an exception when the material that's being tested is bacon. Bacon and milk is together at last. It's really, really tasty and it goes very fast. Bacon is great, there's only one way to top it. And that's the power of bacon with the power of the rocket.
the smoke alarm. Sure sign of a rocket success. But at least, at least that fail was delicious. Yes. Mm. Um, speaking of which, if you want to take a drive through one of the inter- internet's like seedy or neighborhoods, uh, just Google pork rocket. Pork rocket. <laughs> pork rocket. Really? Just roll up the windows and lock the doors before you <laughs> go trolling through there. Why would you have Googled that ever? Pork rocket. <laughs> type in. Today's number three item comes to us. You ever type in BE because you're searching Benny Hanna's and the first thing in the drop down is, is like bestiality? You ever have that happen on the computer? No, because I would, I would never go to a Benny Hanna. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, good point. I don't good need point. some Mexican pretending to be Chinese flipping stuff uh, around. Puerto Rican, first of all. <laughs> I like. I don't like when they're like, "Hey, arigato." I'm like, "You're, you're from, you're from Guatemala. What are you doing?" Uh, he's doing the shrimp uh, trick. Some Guatemalans in the audience. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that man just killed his onion volcano. He's so sad. And then he did a little heartbeat. Oh, look, the rice is jumping. I love Benny Hanna's. Anyway, because you're white. Today's, of course, I am. <laughs> today's number three item comes to us from our favorite salesman of strange, the old Fatal Farm. Yes, the Fatal Farmers have been perfecting their live-action special effects since the last time we saw them, and they're putting those talents to use for the Channel 101 show, Everything. Yeah. Think about this the next time you decide to, I don't know, ignore a homeless person. No thanks, no thank you. You're doing a really good job. Really? I'm not interested. I have a question. Yes. Does that mean that all homeless people are wizards? <laughs> <laughs> they look the part, yeah. I mean, I mean. Okay, well then, I, I don't understand. Why don't they just use magic to build themselves a castle and stop asking me for money? Well, because not even wizards can just wish for heroin. I mean, you have to <laughs> do awkward, disturbing things to get enough money to purchase it. Like what awkward? That was a stupid question. That was a stupid question. <laughs> okay. One for one. <laughs> Yeah, enjoy that slow push. Lo siento, Gabriela. Okay, now I'm done with that. And at number two, a video made at extranormal.com. Now, normally, normally. You normally get sad on slow pushings. I just get happy. That slow pushing made me sad as well. Normally, we'd hold off on telling you uh, the title because uh, that might give away, like, the joke of a video, right? But but I, I really have to say, who can really resist a clip that's called. Farts trash the server. Rocky man, you completely messed up the servers. Whatever happened to the servers had nothing to do with me. The server is destroyed from the CO2 from your smelly farts. I'm not the one who is the farter here, it is you. Please. I am pumpkin cat woman and you are weird broccoli man. And besides I am a girl. And everyone knows girls don't fart. <laughs> Call me crazy. Alright, but pumpkin cat woman has a point. Or fart. I can't really figure out which one. <laughs> if farts did trash servers, G4TV.com would be a blank page and a bad smell. So it's a good thing they're immune. <laughs> Still ahead, Indian food makes you sick. Number one is that number one. What? You say number one is our number one. the show realizes that we are citizens of the world, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Other cultures should always be viewed through a prism of pluralism and, you know, free from our Western bias. Until today. Right. When the agency French Press reported that somewhere in the world people drink cow urine to try to cure ailments. The holy cow, worshipped by Hindus across India. But a growing number now believes this saintly animal can provide both physical as well as spiritual healing. 
here in the western state of Gujarat, cow urine is being used to treat a whole range of ailments. And this is where the process begins, before dawn and in a farm run by the Jagannath Hindu temple. Watching over some 1,000 cows, workers patiently wait for their wards to urinate, encouraged by religious chants. All right. All right. You know what it's time for, Olivia. Um, well, is it time for India to realize you can worship something without ingesting its bodily waste? No. No, no, no. It's time for Drink Some Urine 2010! Yeah. Hey. I'll, I'll get it for you. Thank you. All right. Oh, that is frothy. No. Oh. No. Why? All right. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock. No. Okay. <laughs> Diabetes curing, bone building, cholesterol clearing, cow urine, everybody. Yeah. All right, so just plug your nose if you have to. Out. I know it's, it's warm too. Out. So 30 seconds. Whoever finishes first no. wins. No pride. Stop Here we it. go. Three, two, no. one. No. <laughs> No, Kevin, no. No, I'm, so what the... No, I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I'm actually going to have to... I'm halfway through one leg of cow, you're I'm going to use one of my host veto cards on this one, okay? Can I use this one? Can we cash this in? Can somebody come get this for me? Because I don't want to do... No, I'm going to the... use this now today. What the... It's good today. No, no I'm not. Not today. I've done a lot, but today I'm using that. We... Okay? We have host veto cards? <laughs> oh, yeah. I get, I get actually two a year. You don't get any of those? No. <laughs> well, and also, they give me veto cards and they, they ride me to work on a pony. <laughs> it's in my contract. I just... In my contract. I don't have to do this kind of stuff. I need a new one. <laughs> a, I, need, a new... I need a new contract. <laughs> Why? Why are you still drinking that you don't have to anymore? It's not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> Enjoy your beverage. I'm just gonna change the subject to close. I think we've been drinking out the wrong cow hole all this time. All this time. Hey, here's a fun fact. I'd like to move on. Fun fact about clothes. Um, if it weren't for clothes, I could actually see your penis. That's why I'm very grateful for clothes. Clothes. Now that winter time is out the door, you need to upgrade your wardrobe for spring with a few new threads from the guys over at WeSC. Abbreviated for We Are the Superlative Conspiracy, WeSC is a Swedish clothing company that focuses on street and skateboarding wear for intellectual slackers. Founded in 1999, WeSC has stores all over Europe, Asia, and new stores showing up in the U.S. What sets this brand apart from other clothing companies is their group of WE activists. These like-minded artists, DJs, skaters, and actors such as Jason Lee and Peter Stamari support WeSC's brand and ideology of living life with a streetwise mentality. It's the Backdoor Mountain song that we're singing all day long. With its roots in underground art and music culture, WeSC has a simple yet cool style. Their new spring 2010 collection has recommendations from the Wii activists, such as these assorted plaid shirts and short sleeve polos, which you can purchase from their stores or skate apparel vendors. Skateboarders can find zip-up fleece hoodies, sweaters, and tons of basic cotton tees sporting the Wii SC logo. But if you're in need of some leg wear, then you gotta check out their denim collection. Here you'll find all types of styles ranging from the skinny hipster jeans to five pocket button flies. You'll also find WeSC's newest plaid, cargo, and board shorts just in time for your poolside barbecues. So if you want to be ahead of the clothing curve or you're eyeing a hot Swedish babe, then maybe WeSC has the threads you're looking for. Wow. No wonder they, uh, they win so many Olympic medals. They pop out of the womb and right into hipster snowboarding clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sweden. It's good now that you have another export besides Stieg Larsson novels, right? <laughs> In case you didn't know, I'll just tell you, um, 
<clears throat> says here Stieg Larsson, who lived in Sweden, was the editor-in-chief of the magazine Expo and the leading expert on anti-democratic right-wing extremist and Nazi organizations. He died in 2004, shortly after delivering the manuscripts for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with this Fire, book? and the, the third novel in the series as well. That's what this is, the third novel in the series. And if you'd like, I, I, I'll read you so an Chris excerpt Harvick from is page back. 96. Chris Harvick is back. I'll camper. never get this out of my hair. It takes big ass. I pointed to my head where I look like a chicken was nesting. And I knew the answer anyway. There would be nothing funny to... Here's a question for you. Would you share a bed with your grandma if it meant you didn't have to pay rent? Well, you logged on to G4TV.com and told us what you thought, and we'll have the results after the break. Results are in, and a whopping 92% of you said that you wouldn't share a bed with your grandma for free housing. And I can't say that I blame you. Log on to G4TV.com for more questions like this, and tell us just how far you go. It is time now to hear from Sir Jeremy. He's Basic Cable's foremost expert on dragons. Mm -hmm. Today, he's sharing his thoughts on dragon eggs. Ahoy hoy, Sir Jeremy here. Today I would like to teach you about dragon eggs. Dragon eggs! When dragons are born, they hatch from gnarly dragon eggs. But these eggs aren't boring and white like the ones you get at the supermarket. Dragon eggs are dark gray and covered in spikes and awesome tattoos like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes peeing on a unicorn. And they wear leather jackets. Also, dragon eggs can bench press 225 pounds. <laughs> Solo on an electric guitar, drive a manual transmission, and they speak Spanish. No hablo inglés. Just be careful if you ever stumble across one. Dragon eggs also cause cancer. It's actually really, really sad. I haven't learned about those yet. No. Well, you will. I hope so. Oh, look, a news hobo. Oh, hey. <laughs> Thanks, question mark. Hey, hey, tell you what, news bo. Well, I like that. I like what you're doing, yeah. news hobo. You read the headlines, and then we're going to see um, you back later when we're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to give it back to you. No, I can't. Can my eyes are so blurry. Two. Hey, look, a news hobo. Why is the jig so far? I can't. Tell you, you want me to bring really it closer? Can't read it, I'll bring guys. it closer if my you want. It'll probably blurry. get in the way of another shot. Hold on a second. Dan, come with me. Come on. Oh, I just shut off your prompt. Turn okay. the prompt back go. on. You bring, there oh, there he goes. Okay. I can read from there. Is that good? Yeah, Mike. I don't know. Right. I can't read. Hey, look, a news hobo. Hey, tell you what, news bo. <laughs> you read the headlines, and we'll let you sleep out back tonight. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that, okay, no, that you're, you're, you were fine. Yeah, stop ruining the joke. Do you feed. read? No, start, start oh, feed. man. Feed. After all that, I'm the failure in this situation. Really. It is Wednesday, March 3rd. Here are your top stories. Hulu is losing two of its most popular programs. Beginning on March 10th, all episodes of Comedy Central's The Daily Show and The Colbert Report will be permanently removed from the site, despite consistently ranking among Hulu's most watched programs. Hulu, who's co-owned by Disney, NBC Universal, and Fox Entertainment Group, and now us, <laughs> lamented the departure of the Viacom-owned programs, though fans can still watch full episodes at Comedy Central's site. So really, whatevs? Get it? Okay, wow. Still, the removal of the popular shows has led to speculation that other programs could be yanked from the site in the future, and that is no bueno, my friends. Uh, DVR fans, on the other hand, can rejoice there is a new TiVo in town. That's right, on Tuesday, the company officially announced the launch of its new premier product line. The new slimmer set-top boxes will include a major design overhaul of TiVo's user interface, powered for the first time ever by an HD flash-based engine. 
The units will also feature increased web integration, allowing users to access video podcasts and search the internet. The new models will also support increased storage capacity. The TiVo Premier will store 45 hours of HD content, and the Premier XL does a whopping 150 hours of HD. Now, the two boxes are going to retail for $300 and $500, respectively, and are scheduled to hit stores in early April. And Warner Brothers is feeling a bit nostalgic. The studio is in early development on both a Space Invaders movie and, of course, the previously announced Gilligan's Island movie. And while there are no further details on how Warner plans to go about turning the arcade classic into a summer blockbuster, spoiler alert, they probably won't, Gilligan's Island will be pinned by Brad Copeland, the man responsible for the awe-inspiring thrill ride, Wild Hogs. A lot of dads in the crowd that gave up on their dreams a long time ago. To give Copeland some redeeming value, however, he has previously written for both News Radio and Arrested Development, so that's pretty good. I mean, I, I'm into that. Um, and finally, someone just finished the most difficult freaking playthrough of the Ocarina of Time ever. Get ready for it. I'm going to tell you about it. Jordan Verner, a blind gamer from Ontario, completed his two-year quest to beat the classic N64 game. Verner sent out an online request asking for help completing the entire game, which he'd been playing in small increments, and Roy Williams, not of the Dallas Cowboys, of South Carolina, answered the call, and along with three other gamers, helped Verner with his epic goal. Now, Williams explained that the gamers helped their blind friend by actually typing out every move they made in the game, then they sent it over to Verner, who then had his computer read the, had his computer read the move to him. And then all, all I gotta say about that is that just makes me feel really lazy, and like I've accomplished absolutely nothing in life. <laughs> That's all. I'm Blair Herter, and you've just been fed. Yeah! Thank you. Can I sleep out back? Can Thank I, you, Blair. Thank can you. I sleep out back now? Well, yeah, yeah. Just come, come sleep on the plasma, right here on the stoop. Okay. Right there. Just curl on up there. Do you need a blankie? I'm good for now. How about a unicorn? You want a unicorn? Mm -hmm. Here. Why don't you just take your little unicorn? Mm -hmm. You're good. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Today, we are looking at HD camcorders because sometimes regular definition just isn't enough. I want to see some pores and scars and tears. <laughs> Is that a news hobo sleeping in the yeah, corner? Yeah, we have a news hobo. Right. It's a problem. We've called Terminix, but Fantastic. they have to set traps. It's a process. <laughs> okay. Chris Hardwick, everybody! Hey, everybody! Hey. Our gadget transient. Yes! Uh, you, we have an HD camcorder to chat about? Yes! Uh, here's my Vanna White. What? <laughs> HD camcorders are a crapshoot. Some sacrifice video quality, while others have very little storage. That's why Canon pulled out all the stops with the HFS-11. Not only does it use the trusted Digic DV3 image processor for amazing clarity, but it also has 64 gigs of storage and an SDHC slot for hours of high def. With an instant autofocus, 8 megapixel stills, and 24p cinema mode, this camcorder is ready for anything at 1,100 bucks. All right, as far as camcorders go, I think this is, a, this is about a perfect size, really. Yeah. Uh, weighs nice. about a pound, so it's easy to carry around for sort of long periods of time. Uh, uniform length and width, so it feels very comfortable when you're shooting. Um, is it easy to use, though, Chris? Because I noticed there's a lot of dedicated buttons. This thing is not a, a touchy screen. Right, it is very easy to use. The joystick on the LCD makes navigation pretty simple. Although sometimes when you're moving it, you're going to accidentally press down and select something, which is usually kind of frustrating, and then you'll swear and everything will be fine. Uh, <laughs> manual focus, photo capture, and other frequently used functions are all within a finger's reach, oh, which is convenient. great for a hand, uh, handheld camera. And overall, it doesn't really need a touchscreen. We didn't really feel like it needed one. Well, that's good. It's got features abound. All right. <laughs> abound? Abound. Yeah. Like dynamic image stabilization, 8 megapixel digital stills, uh, captures video in 24p or 30p, a bunch of stuff. Right. Um, they advertise these features. Do they work as well as advertised, Chris? Because they advertise that they would work. <laughs> it's not like someone's going to go, uh, yeah, this image stabilization feature doesn't work by this camera. Like, no one's going to do it. <laughs> but it's there. But, you know, for the most part, these all work. I mean, the super range optical image, image stabilization makes a huge difference, especially when zoomed in. Movement is much smoother. But here, it does exaggerate that movement a little more than we like. So okay. uh, here, let's go. I, I will stand very let's still. Go. Uh, there you are. I'll zoom out a little bit. There, there you are. Okay, so when you see when I move it, you see like there's a there's a little extra movement on the end there. There's, she's not standing there in real life. She's imprinted her soul onto the film. Seven days. Why did this just turn into the ring? Yeah, it did turn into the ring. So you can see right there the image like with, like in yeah. compensating. It's sort of like. But what uh, if, if you're doing like a smoother move and assuming it, you're not if, doing if whip hands move, it, like, it, it looks it looks really good. I mean, like you you can you're not you're not shaky at all. But okay. you do see a little bit extra movement there. It's sort of like 
you know, if you're making a hard turn on a slick road and your car kind of like skids out a little bit, that's what it kind of does to compensate. Gotcha. But it's and also it also has the ability to take photos, which is pretty nice. But like most camcorders, it's not really the best function of a camcorder. But let's uh, let's take a picture here, uh, Kev. You want to do? Oh, hey, adorable! <laughs> Smile for the camcorder! Hooray! <laughs> You were all excited, and Olivia was barely invested at best. Yay! Uh, Can you guys keep it down on I'm sorry, we didn't mean to interrupt That's you. That's our mind. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt with your fame. You know, autofocus is super fast, much faster than a lot of other camcorders we've tested. 64 gigs of internal memory. That's a lot. But then you also got that SDHC card slot, so you okay. can actually put more memory in there. But if it comes from Canon, then I, uh, we should expect that the image quality is the best that we can have, right? I mean, how is it? It looks pretty good. Uh, it looks pretty good. Low light footage is below average, though. Oh, okay. Um, there tends to be... Uh, a, he doesn't even have a beard in real life. That's oh, wow. just the kid, the shadow. Oh, it's got beard stabilization, which is beard nice. Beard stabilization. It it very That's smooth. not true. I made that up, Canon. Don't get mad. There's a large <laughs> amount of noise than we'd like to see when, when it's dark and the motion trailing is way too obvious. Even the darker it gets, you can see our staff is being attacked by whoever's holding the right. camera. Uh, normal light footage. <laughs> normal light footage looks pretty spectacular. That looks Color, really nice. That yeah. looks nice. Colors are vibrant and accurate and details are super sharp. I mean, this really is some of the best outdoor footage that we've seen, so good job. Okay, but it is pricey. It's 1100 bucks. That is a lot of money. Um, outdoor looks good. Got a bunch of features. Is it worth it? Actually, I think it is. It is worth it. Even though the image quality wasn't as amazing as we had hoped, it was still some of the best. All right, what are we giving it, Chris? Well, designs are solid. Features are plentiful. Oh! Abound? Abound? Plentiful? Who woke up on the wrong side of the Tolkien this morning? <laughs> uh, image quality is great, so even though it is expensive, I am still going to give it a 4 out of 5. It's still oh, good. Very nice, very nice. Good rating. Good rating. Yeah, good rating. Thank you, Chris. So, uh, I'm just going to go now. No! What? No, wait, Chris, you can't Whoa, go. okay. Please, Chris, don't go. Why? Chris, well, you cannot leave. Well, okay. Chris, stay. Please don't. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> we wanted you to talk about your big news. I'm pregnant. Yes! <laughs> With a brand new episode of Web Soon! Oh, here's, a, uh, here's a quick behind the scenes look at the preparation of the new season of Web Soup. All right, guys, news flash. New season of Web Soup premieres Wednesday, March 3rd at 8 p.m., and we need some seriously crazy viral videos this season. And I'm not talking about Japan crazy. I mean, like, Czech Republic crazy. What do you got? Let's go around the room. Watermelon head. <laughs> We'll never get the music right. Anyone else? Dolphin, what do you got? Your species was not meant to be on land, Dolphin. Anyone else? Um, how about an elderly strong man being unmercifully beaten by another man in silk underpants? How about yes? <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Ah, how about that? <laughs> Seriously, though, who else is turned on? The internet has this coming. An all-new season of Web Soup premiering March 3rd at 8 p.m. only on G4. Uh, wait a minute. That date sounds really familiar, I was Chris. just looking at the calendar on the front of my phone here, and I believe today, isn't today, Wednesday, March 3rd? It is, Chris! What? You're going to go throw yourself a premiere party! Hooray! Well, now we know where Abound and Plentiful came from. Hooray! Doing a victory Olivia lap! Olivia? Hooray! Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just attack some, some retro stuff. If you don't know what Pong is, I don't like you. But if you're normal, then you'll get a kick out of the monochron. If you don't know what this is, it is a huge LCD screen that displays a never-ending game of Pong to keep the time. Unfortunately, you can't actually play the game, but come on, do you really have the urge to play Pong anymore? <laughs> you don't. The Monocon is DIY, so get your ass to LadyAuto.net and build your own. But what about Doom, huh? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Anything about that one? Hmm? That game kicked ass, and who doesn't want more of it? Right? Take a trip back to your gory days with the Doom Box. This little mod is a dedicated gaming rig built from an old Kodak DC290 camera with a bunch of swapped out QWERTY buttons. But be warned, the instructions to build your own aren't for the faint of heart. But if you think you're hardcore, this one's for you. Yes, you, not you, you. <laughs> and finally, Adidas, or as I like to call it, Adidas. We pretty much had a monopoly on 80s fashion, so it'd be blasphemy to neglect these ZX500s. Sure, they've got retro styling and color scheme, but as an added bonus, 
They come with a little USB stick that's loaded with a 2D platformer just to remind you how much video games used to suck. <laughs> they did, and you know it. Throw on your jumpsuit and pick up a pair for 90 bucks. Head on over to G42.com slash AOTS for info on all these retro products and more. Stay tuned. We're talking Oscars in the loop. Will Avatar beat the Herd Locker? And does District 9 have a shot? But first, everybody, here is our exclusive look at the Afterlife trailer starring Liam Neeson and Christina Ricci. Your blood no longer circulates through your body. Your brain cells are slowly dying. Your body's already decomposing. You're dead. I'm not dead. Oh my gosh. Wake up. Anna! Anna, come on. It's all... No way! Anna! Just let me go. Please. You're still in denial. They just see you as a dead body on a slab. Only I can see you as you really are. But I'm not dead! I'm the only one who can hear you now. Then prove to me that I'm really dead. She's not dead, is she? And for the first time, popular films like Avatar, Up, and District 9 are actually on the best picture lists. We're talking Oscars in the loop. <laughs> Joining me now to help us make sense of it all, editor for The Hot Blog, David Poland is here. How are you, sir? <laughs> and our very own film guy, Christopher Gore, is here as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, play nice, kids. Let's get right into it. Uh, we have the, the best picture category. Um, uh, David, this year, thanks to ten nominees, we have films like District 9 and yeah. The Blind Side, huh? Sandy Bullock fans here? Yeah? No. Um, but they're in the running, and normally these films probably wouldn't have a chance, right? Well, Avatar would. I mean, Avatar would be there no matter what, I think. But yes, you have a bunch of movies, like also in Education, which I'm sure three people here saw, if that. Yeah, well, uh, the, the applause was deafening. Hold yes. on a second. Let those fans die down. Don't be carry fans. Um, yeah. yeah, so a lot of movies, bigger and smaller, got in because of it. Well, is that a good thing? I think it is. I think it's actually kind of wasn't about Star Trek, and it wasn't about The Hangover. I like Star Trek, and I like The Hangover. Mm -hmm. But it actually were they were good movies. Some of them were bigger, some of them were smaller, and it actually got a nice mixture going on. I, I kind of feel like uh, it's the same feeling I had when I went from the little kid table to sitting at the big table at Thanksgiving. <laughs> now the genre movies can now be a part of basically the white people uh, drama movie awards. But, but what which, about, is what, which is what the Oscars has always been. A celebration of Caucasians, and, of course. Right. Right. Just being the whitest movie of them all. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. But I mean, what about, the, the, Chris, are those that say, well, now the votes could be split. Now you could, you could be number one with only 20 or 30 percent of the vote, potentially. Uh, I'm not good true. with Math, but I think those numbers sound right. That's true. Um, Actually, it's not yeah. true. They changed the voting system so that you can you have to get to fifty one percent, but you don't have to get it in the first ballot. So it's not everybody going just this is the one movie of the ten I like. Oh, okay. You do a whole list, and then whatever movie wins will get fifty percent of the Academy voting for it. So will people still cry foul when they don't win, or will they accept this as okay? This is a good system. There's more movies in play. People will bitch and moan till the end of time at the Academy <laughs> Awards. There's stories about people leaving the Academy Awards. I can't believe I flew in from London for this stupid. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They complain no matter what happens. 
Oscars. But this is the best part of the Academy Awards is because I feel like I have a hate hate relationship with the Oscars, and that's the fun part is to complain about it. That's right. that's why we're here. That's what this show is for specifically Correct. after yeah. the Oscars. But what about Avatar, David? You said it's going to be in there no matter what, even yeah. if it weren't ten films. Is it going to be a big night for Avatar? I think it probably will be. I think the likelihood is. I mean, there's all this Hurt Locker talk lately, and I love Hurt Locker, but I think Avatar is the movie that changed Hollywood. I mean, besides being a huge box office, it really did change the way people make movies. I think even more than people realize. Chris, would you agree? Well, uh, first of all, I can think of another movie that changed Hollywood that was Star Wars in 1977. And, of course, uh, that film did not win that year. It was Annie Hall. But Star Wars uh, didn't change the, the, the functionality of how Hollywood works. Star Wars oh, kind of no, changed. I think Star Wars changed Star Wars, the effects were The effects were not thing. cutting edge. They didn't change the way people actually made movies. They were movies. not cutting edge in 1977? I no, thought that's what that Star Wars was all about when yeah. it came out. Well, it no, changed it was, everything. Uh, what I mean, it was was actually old-style filmmaking that was done in a kind of new way. But Silent Running and other effects movies had done that. Dykstra had already done a lot of those effects. This movie just kind of put it all together in a way that people wanted to consume so, in a different way. So I, I would say that now that we're still talking about Star Wars, there was six movies and all the, the upcoming live action, all this stuff. Star Wars changed Hollywood. I don't think you can... Well, Star Wars in retrospect. Let's focus on money. Avatar really quick then, right. because because yeah. a lot of the talk seems to be about the special effects. The right. fact that this was a 3D IMAX spectacular. So <laughs> yeah, they win. They win maybe best special effects. I don't even know if they're up for that. But let's say they yeah. take a category like that. Does that translate to best picture? I don't know. Box office is always kind of uh, uh, hurt uh, the chances of any because it's usually the film that needs the most help. It's well, the film that's like it, it, you'll you'll not remember it. My favorite question to ask at an Oscar party is, "Hey, do you remember what won Best Picture two years ago?" The only movies that have that, the only box office nobody, of course. The Look only movie up. that won that have won Best Picture only of the thirty top grocers of all time, only two have won Best Picture. The top two. Titanic and Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Right. So Avatar is right in that group, and I think that's probably why. And Cameron's been it. there once before. So yes, he has. Could happen. And again. he is king of the world, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> yeah. He's still apologizing for that. He still thinks everybody got it, you know, kind of made fun of him for that. Uh, he, he swung at a dummy with a folding chair on this show, so <laughs> we're totally cool with him. He's fine. Um, a lot of people would like to see Quentin win. I think for *Inglorious Bastards*. Um, Quentin, especially. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but what about what about Christoph Waltz? I mean, he, for for best supporting actor, I think he's got to be a lock. No. I, I agree. I think he's a lock. He and I mean, Monique are considered the two locks because they kind of won everything. So who's going to beat him? You know, that's yeah, that's, I mean, that's the question. Yeah. But now do you think Quentin will be happy by the end of the evening? No. No? Yeah, Quentin no, will be disappointed. No. Well, the big thing for Quentin is whether he wins screenplay. I mean, he's not mm. going to win Best Picture. He's not going to win a lot of other things. But he could win Best Screenplay or Mark Bowl from The Hurt Locker could beat him. So the funny thing is I think if Bowl wins for Hurt Locker, the movie loses Best Picture. If oh, he loses to Quentin, there's a chance they actually get Best okay. Picture. Okay. All right. So. Now, Chris, you said you have a hate-hate relationship with the Oscars. That's true. Uh, but now, okay, we have ten Best Picture nominees. Uh, and this year we've got Joel Madden on the wheels of Whoa. steel, the ones and twos. They're trying to hip it up for the tweens. No. Yeah. What about Steve Martin and Alec Baldwin? I, between yeah. those three, four yeah. changes? Well, no. I think, I think Alec Baldwin, is, that's a great choice, mm -hmm. and Steve Martin. I mean, that, that's cool. But literally, it's been a variety show. Uh, from the 70s, it's this leftover with the musical numbers. It's Cirque du Soleil with movies. What? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not fun to watch. It's torturous. I like to watch it in TiVo time uh, and, and fast forward through most of yeah. it. I mean, I mean, it's supposed to be a show, which is why I think uh, a lot of the winners, you're kind of waiting for something, some mistake to happen. Right. Dave Rubin, it's an opportunity for kids to have sex. Teenagers can go in their room. Their parents won't bother them for three and a half hours. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> Come out for pizza. It's the best night they're going to have of the year. But they have no interest in watching the Oscars. And, you know, that's the way it's it's meant to be. All right. Thanks to our guests, David and Chris, for keeping us in the loop. Appreciate the time, guys. I have still yet to get laid during the Oscars, but maybe this is my year. Let's go to Olivia. Still ahead, people open their minds using rocks and darts. Break Moments is next. Ow! Coming up tomorrow on an all-new AOTS, acclaimed Training Day director Antoine Fuqua is here to talk about his new movie, Brooklyn's Finest. And on Gadget Prawn, we'll have the Arcos 9 PC tablet. It's less than an inch thick and weighs under two pounds. Find out if you should give it a good home. And Galactopedia has the details on NASA's moon mission for one lucky robot and a Mars mission droid that's armed with a laser. See it tomorrow. Yes, folks, it is time for yet another depressing edition of Break Moments in De-Evolution. This week, people finally use their heads to do things they really, really shouldn't. <laughs> Ride 
run in. I just sold it. Sold it. Now there are a lot of ways you can break a glass bottle. Yeah. This isn't one of them. <laughs> no. Oh. 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 It's like christening the USS Tard. <laughs> uh, and I, the title of this bottle in head, it's just like bottle on head. Bottle on head, yeah, on. yeah. And then off of it. Uh, this week's rating is skid marked lingerie. Ew. Oh. Personal experience? Ew. Just something you don't want to find on your bedroom floor or Ugh. on your person. How many have you given them? Ew. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't see any blood or anything like that, but I, I'd like to you know think that, that hurt. he... You I'd know like to that think hurt. that it caused internal bleeding and now he's dead somewhere, so I'm going to say four to five. Oh, okay. Because I have the idea. Those aren't... You recognize that? <laughs> oh, British people. What? Well, I love them. We love their culture, their charm, but one thing's for sure, we don't love them for the smuts. Oh, wow. So where do you want to give this bloke? Oh, this bloke? This bloke? Uh, I five out of five. Yay! I mean, first one looked like a tail, then it just looked like massive head trauma. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have massive head trauma from watching this clip, so we're done. Thank you. G14.com slash AOTS for all the things you guys saw today and more. Many, many thanks to our guests, David Poland, Chris Gore, and Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Uh, speaking of which, you got to stick around because the premiere of Web Soup is going to start as soon as we're done yapping, like in about I don't know, 35 seconds or so. So what are you going to do for the FH Muck? I don't know yet. I'm not sure what my, my the whole thing is. You do the something with spotted dick? What's that? It's a food. In, um, in, in London? foggy London town. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what my shoot thing is going to be. You want to be like one of those sexy Buckingham Palace ladies that just stands there all stern? No, not in really. In a bikini with some tassels? No. No? Any other ideas you have? That's really all I had. I thought it would be kind of cool. Something with a musket? No. Something with tea? No. Nope? No. You want to dress as the queen? No. No? No. Okay. Nine. Well, good luck eight, with your shoot, Olivia. Seven. Good night, everybody. Five.